normally I would burn the whole backside and then flip it over and burn the front. The, the way you do it is not exactly the same. And that's because here on the back, my beads stop here, my lines stop here, and I'm going to have decent separation. So each one of these lines, I'm gonna follow close to, if not all the way up to the foot. On the front, that's not so. They start to overlap as we get smaller and smaller and smaller. And of course, I don't want just a big burn blob in the middle. This burner gets hot quick. I always have a waste block of whatever wood I'm using to see what things look like. That's a nice little burn. You can see that maybe it was a little hotter at the top here. So I tend to either want to touch this waste block before I touch my plate or give it a quick little to cool it down just so you don't get that initial wide burn. I played with the temperature of course many times on this to get where I think I should be. So how do I burn? Normally I hunch over it a lot farther but I don't want to be in your way. So I'm going to start on a line and follow it all the way out. and then another. I generally can't do the entire plate or all the way around as the pen gets way too hot and I have to stop and take a break. But now we're up to 120 lines and there's no rush here. I'm relaxing. Some may say I'm crazy, well some do say I'm crazy for all of this, but really I'm relaxing. And you get the idea. I'll come back and I'll finish the back of this plate and later on and I'll show you but for now I need to swap over and do the front so you have some idea of how that works. Now this is the front you can see the lines I hope you can see that the lines are gonna be a lot harder to burn and when we get down here in the middle it's kind of a mess. So it all depends on the number of lines you've decided to do. My first at 48 was no problem. I was able to come all the way down to the bottom. Of course, I don't think my center was quite that small either. But here's what I do when I have 120 lines to burn. I'm gonna pick a line that looks reasonable. And I'm going to take this line, this first line, all the way down to the center. Now I know these next lines are gonna to start to overlap. So for 120, what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip and I'm gonna to go to the fifth line. 
and then I'm going to burn that fifth one and bring that one all the way down to the center. Then I'm gonna to go to this middle line and I can see when I start to get close to my burns and I'm gonna stop. It looks like we're gonna make it all the way down to second to last or third to last before we start getting too small or getting too close to overlapping. I don't know if you can see it or not. I hope you can see it. But I have just a little bit of space there. And I have these two here that I'm not gonna burn. I may come back and burn a line on this one later. We'll see how this all looks. Next, I'm gonna split those lines again and do the same thing. Bring it on down. until I get too close. Then I'm gonna stop. Huh? That was maybe a little too close. It'll be okay though. And the next one. jump to the fifth line over and this line goes all the way to the bottom and if you wondered it's a lot harder to burn when I'm not hunched up as close as I normally am it's trying to stay out of the camera so that you can see and split the middle. And stop before I get too close. And on around. Now I'm gonna go finish the back finish up the front and then we'll be back all right the burning on the back is finished I've taken it outside and I've wiped it down front and back with acetone do that out in the shop you know because I don't want these fumes in the house but what it does is it removes all the stray pencil marks somewhere where when I burned my line, I didn't stay on. Or here on the front, where all these pencil lines came together, I was able to clean that out. And so now I can see that there are a few spots in here, such as right there, and right there, right there, right there. There's a few spots here where I want to burn another couple lines. So I'm gonna, this was not turned on by the way. So I'm gonna turn on my burner and I'm gonna go ahead and knock that out and take care of these last few lines. So I need to burn this, clean this up, and then we need to work the rim because that's the other spot that hasn't been done yet.
And just looking around to find those spots that I showed you. Just so things aren't too far off. Not too many spots, but a few. It's really hard to tell with all that pencil on there. So that's why I've started doing this. And I think that looks pretty good. So now, what to do with the rim? So the rim is one of those things, and you can do this however you want. A lot of times, I'm going to do something like I did on this one. Maybe you can see the rim there. but it doesn't come out the same each time. And I don't worry so much about that. So I'm going to start here on the front and I'm going to just angle a line off of here. And here, and here, and here, and here and around we'll go. Just on around 120 times. And you get the idea. And off to the back we go. See where my lines are. Many times I want my lines to angle the same direction. So on the back, in order to do that, I'm going to come, I'm going to come if you can see, I'm going to come this way and burn across. Now this is not going to be all perfect either. And they're not all going to line up. And I'm not too worried about that. But I have a long ways to go to get around this. And I hope you can see how this rim is coming out so far. But I'll get back to you when I'm done. When I finish this rim, this plate will be ready to receive a pattern. And then colors. With all the burning complete on this plate, the rim burnt all the way around and even my signature and the year burnt into the back of the plate. It's really ready for the pattern now. How I make that pattern is by using polar graph paper. So I get my polar graph paper online for free. Here's the link. I will really try and remember to help you out and put it in the comments below the video. So I design my pattern here on this graph paper and from there I go to the plate. Now what I color with are these Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen Brush. This is India Ink. With the B gives me the nice tip that I want and they have many many colors my daughter has donated a pencil bag to my cause yeah I know it's goofy but you can see I got a whole bunch I've also tried things like this sharpie oil based and some other things but they don't seem to work as well Go on, Dick Blick has the widest and the best selection, but you can get these at Hobby Lobby and Michaels and other art stores also. All right, I think that about wraps it up. And you've seen all the tools and all the work put into these plates, except of course for putting the pattern onto the plate. 
but I hope this has been a big help for you. And I hope you'll see, you'll make some plates, small or large, whatever, and send me a message. I'd love to see what you've made, especially if I've helped.